tunaharibu katika ibada ya siku ya leo. Karibiao huyo mwingine amwambie karibu sana katika ibada ya siku ya leo.
the Bible reminds reminds us that to be to be ambassadors of Christ, even in exam seasons. Guy, 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 guy. Me, I am dead. Me, me, Prisha. Me, go now, me, pass that to the first day. That do. The first day to arrive. Now, I'm going to be mad. O D E. That is the sister. The Lord is with you. How? Ache, I can have friends in a content. But as for me, I believe their discussions to my father, Sita to her. More of our sin, Sita to my father, the vision. When the, when the group discussion is out, but personal discussion has not been easy, I say. Hey, <laughs> let's trust in God, my sin. Listen, the Bible tells us in the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4 that who that are born of God are overcomers. What's it? To the Peter exam. Amen. Let us go to the fellowship. Hello, everyone. What's up? And that is final for now. And about the paper, what are you declaring for this coming exam? I will do my best, and God will do the rest. Now I say, Bona Mekunjasura, at least speak some good things concerning the exam when you're not good. At least, Indiana Kasmai Kidogo. How much of a Sure, sure. By the way, Sister Diana, ile formula ya... What a pressure! I always say you let go and let go to enjoy the exam. Ah, wait a minute. I think we can at least take a second before we go. Three, two, one. Hashtag Kubita Ina Mwagena. Creative Ministry Production. Uh, it's the UOECU advocacy policy. Yeah, can you ask us, your friend what is advocacy? How do you understand advocacy? <laughs> When I dispose waste, like how does he or she dispose his or her own waste? Like, which of them? Fine. So, we have the UOECU advocacy policy. This is a final committee was commissioned. That, that is with the executive committee 2022-2023 and uh, to carry out our well research on Christian advocacy and how it can be carried out in our times. The research was conducted during the long holiday period by the members of the advocacy policy formulating committee. I'd like to acknowledge them because uh, they have ha been having several meetings and uh, sittings to come up with this policy. So, members of the committee, please, may you be on your feet. So, church, this has been the committee which has been steering.
family where ministering to God's people is our daily delight. Our first ministration song, we are praising God for the great things He has done to us. And our second ministration song is all about to say that doing righteousness and justice is better than sacrifice. Be blessed as we minister. Amen.
the parts where the birds of the air came and collected it. Praise the name of the Lord. Other seeds fell on rocks. Amen. Where the soil was shallow and they would not survive. Others fell where? In thorns. Praise the name of the Lord. And others in good soil. Praise the name of Jesus. Just evaluate yourself. Amen. It continues and says, it's like a man who went and planted a garden and while he was asleep, the enemy came and also planted what? Weeds. Amen. And then the servant came and told the master, I guess you planted, you planted what? Amen. And then the word says that the master told him, just wait. The wheat to grow with the weeds. But during the time of harvest is where you shall appreciate it. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's evaluate ourselves as we end the semester. If you are really built up and rooted in the world. Praise the name of Jesus. Yeah, also a reminder of the Mount Elkon for Jesus. So these ones, they are not here to decorate the church. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's carry this in our hearts. Remember the people of Okiek. Praise the name of the Lord. Those who went for the follow-up, they came with a testimony. Amen. And I think that testimony is living and it is among us. Hallelujah. There is one of us from Mount Elko who came to visit Eldoret. Says, yes, we are the advisors come to Mount Elko and they give the word of hope. So you want to come and see the source. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So he is here. I don't know whether he is here to, to, to wake up and pray uh, to the church. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is the testimony who you should have won us to do. What is the steward? Amen. As you are done, Amen. For my dear, I Nakula juu nilipatana na washirika ambao natoka shuleni hapa tu university hapa ndio walikuja kunitembelea juu huko ndio tukaweza tukaongea na hao pia kalishika mkono nikaweza kufika mahali huko hivi So baada siku na jua ndio ni wapi mimi nizaliwa tu huko kuishi huko unaona hata haikuwa si mimi sijapata kuona shule nzuri kama hii announcement that has been made every Friday and uh, Sunday that Monday is our prayer and fasting for the least rich to grow. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. But sure, we have been unfaithful about this and we need to repent as a church. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Let me speak with a confidence. Amen. Amen. Also me, I need to repent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Because if you have ever been there from 5 to 6 on Monday, I know the prayer, the prayer secretary of the missions can testify 
about the number. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. That number is very small compared to the number that we are, we gather there on Wednesdays and on Thursday. Praise the name of Jesus. Let's co uh, correct that and go for prayers and pray for those people. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Now you can see for yourself and we appreciate the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's be on our feet. Some of us are very comfortable. Praise the name of Jesus. And uh, I need us to hear from the Lord. And I know if you can afford to sleep while the speaker of today is speaking. Actually also you need to cross check yourself. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah, I know we are ready for it. What is our topic? Integrity. Amen. Amen. And this integrity is not only... <laughs> But you will say it. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. So, a speaker have a bachelor of commerce in accounting option in 2015 from Puan University. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, he's a member of Focus Kenya from 2015 to 2016. He served as the stem of Marseno. 2016 to 2017, stem Foy. And now from 2017 to today, he is the CMF of North Rift region. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he is married uh, to Miriam. They are blessed with one daughter, Eliana. And our speaker's name is Kataka Everton. Amen. Let's continue to clap for wish we pray, we pray, we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. Just open your voice, raise your mouth and tell the Lord, speak to my heart. Speak to my heart, Lord. I naked myself. I empty myself. Lord, fill me this morning. Fill me with morning. Fill me. Fill me, Jesus, with your word. I surrender hope to you. I open my heart for you. Jesus Christ, fix my life. Deal with me through your word, through the scriptures that are reaching, rebuking, and correcting. Lord, correct me and rebuke me in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray the Lord I will be a good son this morning. I pray that Jesus will make me a new white skin. As the Lord you pour to me a new wine this morning, Lord, I pray that Jesus Christ is going to prosper in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for our speaker. I pray the Lord you may anoint him freshly this morning. As he speaks to us, Lord, I pray that Jesus will use him as a servant, Lord, as a help. You will use him, King of all glory. Even my father is a pipe. That Jehovah is going to, to pipe us, King of all glory, this morning. Through a word, through the voice, and through the sound. That Jesus Christ, you are giving him this morning. We glorify your name and we honor you. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. right after spoken. Uh, where is she? Yeah, you will please come and talk about Tesla as soon as I finish. Uh, yeah, I'll spare some few minutes out of my own time.
Yeah, praise the Lord. I like you to speak when my hands are free. I think that's okay, brother. Yeah. Oh, uh, and uh, maybe help me just to have my uh, voice a little bit up, a little bit, uh, for the app, so that uh, someone can uh, hear me clearly. I would also love to know how many minutes I have, uh, so that uh, I'm able to finish uh, way earlier. <coughs> What do you do about that? The vibration or something? Uh, in, in my village. Kipsang, I come from the slopes of Mount Elgon, a place called Kapkate. That is where I went for my high school. And occasionally you would come to Chebuk to play soccer. Uh, those of you who are wondering whether I play soccer. <laughs> that is where I did most of my soccer. Of course, uh, uh, those are times when I was so active around uh, sports and all that, and it's a joy uh, to see you. So, just somewhere there, around the uh, Kapkaten, there is a church that it is called that is called the Pesh. Pesh is Pentecostal, evangelical, salvation, and healing ministries. That is where I go to church when I'm in the village. And when we are there, there is uh, this song that we sing. Uh, we could do a banga, Leluia. 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 Now, the one who leads that song. Uh, I think one mic is enough, don't add another one. Yeah. Unless you have to change the stand. No, it's okay. Oh, okay. And the one who is leading the song uh, decides to make it so nice. You know, the song means that in heaven we sing hallelujah. Right? And so he wants to ensure that you enjoy being in heaven. And he decides to add some line and says, Now, you sing, yeah? Oh. means milk, that there is milk in heaven. <laughs> And as if that is not enough, he also says, We could in your horse, yo. We could That there is a lot of chicken to eat in heaven. No, no, I am be appearing as a news uh, reporter. <laughs> but it's because I love my hands to be free when I am speaking. Now, and then he finishes his song and says, Hallelujah, 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 Hallelujah. It is a song to remind us 
that as believers we live with our feet on earth but our minds in heaven and that is how you need to live your life daily as a Christian that your feet and your body and everything is right here on earth but your mind is in heaven that we have a destiny we have a place that we are going this earth is not our home and not so long from now we will join and be with our father and many of us will live as though we imagine that we are going to be here on this earth forever it is either we go and meet our father or he comes we see his feet touching the mount of olives where the dead those who died in Christ will, you know, raise up and go and meet him in the clouds. And we who are alive would be caught up with him in the clouds. And you have got to remember this, that you do not have the luxury of time to live here on earth. And the old Apostle John reminds us that it is the last hour. And then he said that, brethren, it is the last hour then it means that today we are living in the last minute. And then please remember this, as you make choices, as you live your life, as you interact, as you're here, remember, remember that you're not supposed, I mean, you're not supposed to imagine that you will build this earth forever. And you can attest to that. So the people whom we thought that would be with us until today, they are no longer here. I used to think my mother would be here with me until today, but she is not here. And please be reminded that your life belongs to God. And the time is going to come when you will roll up your life and he will call you to himself. <laughs> but you see, even as we live our lives right here on earth, God expects and anticipates each and every one of us to live for him. And I know that there are people who probably, you have come today to this fellowship simply because it is a Sunday and you wanted a place to confess your sins and make yourself feel so nice. And then on Monday you go back to your life. And I want to tell you that it is just a matter of time and God is waiting for you to make that conscious decision and say that I want to live for the Lord. And he will be very patient with you. He will be very patient. He never got tired to wait for me. You know like the way the groom waits for the bride at the altar? For 17 good years, Jesus waited for me at the altar so that I could be married to him and that I could live my life for him for the rest of my life here on earth. And therefore, he's still waiting for you to go or rather to come at the altar and get married to him. And today we are talking about integrity, something that seems to be fading day in, day out. <laughs> And sometimes you look at the things that are going on in our lives, in our, in our environment, where we are, and you wonder, really, the question that Jesus asked, that when he comes back, will he really, really, really find faith? Because even we who are there, we seem to be tossed around by the world. And friends and beloved of God, as we are talking about integrity this morning, we are talking about adherence to moral and ethical principles. We are talking about values. We are talking about soundness of your moral character. We are talking about honesty. Do you think these are virtues that really guide your day-to-day -day life? Are you morally upright? Do you have ethical principles even to begin with? That is the question that we are asking ourselves this morning. What is 
the level of your living. Do you live in wholeness and truth in all the aspects of your life? Or do you only do that at your convenience? Have you ever sat down and asked yourself whether you have values? Because the kind of things that we are doing, we do not have values. We don't have values, really. Friends, yes, we do not have them. And someone said that if you claim to have values, if you claim and say that for me, honesty is a value that I want to esteem and espouse in all the days of my life, if you ever violate that value, then it is not a value, it is a hobby. When you say that you are a believer and you're living as though you are not one, then you, 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 you're practicing Christianity as though it is your hobby. And therefore, when you're talking about integrity, beloved of God, we are talking about you walking your talk. And it is integrity that gives us authority to confront various issues in the life that we live today. And today I want to highlight four areas that we need to check our integrity. And those areas are financial integrity, social integrity, spiritual integrity, and technological integrity. Those are the four areas that I want us to talk about. And this morning I want to begin by financial integrity. And when we are talking about financial integrity, we are talking about this because we are in a society where whenever we talk about corruption, we are simply talking about embezzlement of funds. Not only, you know, in the public sector, but even in the church. When we are talking about financial integrity, we are talking even about how you are handling your finances as an individual, as a person. I think there was a question here about gambling. And I know someone was like, ah, okay, so who doesn't gamble? But do you think you are a person of integrity if you gamble? Do you think so? Really? <laughs> it is the greatest challenge for many young people today. And not only young people, even men of God. We have seen men of God who worship money more than they are God. Those are not men of God. Probably they are servants of the devil. It is true. And that is why Jesus said, you cannot worship God and money. In the Old Testament, people would worship idols. But in the New Testament, people are worshipping either God or money. And so we look at the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 16, and from verse 11. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version, unless I quote otherwise. And this is what it says. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also had all these things and they derided him. Other versions would say they scoffed at Jesus. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money alright we can do NKJV if it's there, if not that's okay. <coughs> also had these things and they derided him but they said to them and, and he said to them you are those who justify and allow me to just go back from verse 11 Jesus was speaking about Jesus was speaking about an unjust steward. And in verse 11, he says, Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, 
That is money, your wealth. Who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters. For either he will hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. <clears throat> And the Pharisees were there when Jesus was saying these words. That is why verse 14 begins and says, Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also had these things, and they derided him. They scoffed at him, saying, Ha ha, why should you even be worried about what Jesus is saying? For us we know that we are rich, we are wealthy. We are respected in the synagogue. Everyone respects us. They boasted at the fact that they had a lot of money and they were wondering why was Jesus attacking them with regards to the fact that they had wealth. But the Bible tells us that they were lovers of money. Now, Go and ask those Pharisees today in hell if they regret <laughs> that they didn't listen to Jesus. They do. And the Pharisees had known the scripture. They had known God's position of money. Actually, they had studied the law. In Deuteronomy 8.18, it says that it is God who gives you power. To make wealth. In other times, in other terms, all the money that you have, you have it because God has given to you. And if God has given us something, He anticipates that we will handle it the way He wants us to handle it with a lot of integrity. These Pharisees had read all these, and they never understood that it is God who gave them the ability to have whatever they have. Please remember this, that that money you have, even that help that you have received, it is God who has enabled you to get it. Some people have not gotten it. It is the Lord. That money that you are holding on to and you don't want to give an offering, friends, it is the Lord's. And because you do not attribute these things, the wealth and the money that we have, we tend to imagine that we want to accumulate a lot of money to ourselves. And maybe you just don't need all that. Brethren, we have got so many things to be thankful for. And that is why money should not be our God. I believe that anyone who has got money, and they are godly, they will put their face down before the dust. And before God and say, everything I have is because God, you have given me. And never ever imagine that holding on to money is what is going to solve your problems. And probably the Pharisees have not meditated on this. Actually, at some point in Colossians, greed is being put in the same category as immorality. Greed is in the same category with immorality. The people who are greedy behave as though they are idol worshippers. They bow down to money. They tell money, I will do everything you want me to do. Tell me anything and I shall do it. Please don't be in the same category. And that is why you imagine that I need to gamble, I need to bet. So that I can get rich. Friends, for the many years that you have been betting since first year, you would have been out of this school at each person. <laughs> you would. How is it that you are not 
not even able to just give that money to help your friend. We are talking about welfare. Right here in the Christian Union, people love money. They love money. Money is their slave. Can you imagine someone playing a, a theater? <laughs> like you're wasting your time waiting for a plane not to fly. <laughs> Instead of reading, you wonder why you have so many problems? It's because you love money. And Jesus here is telling us that you cannot serve both God and money. It means that if you are to be a person of integrity, then money is one of the things that you need. The love of money is one of the things that you need to defeat. You came to this world with nothing. So does First Timothy 6 verse 7 tells us. And no doubt you are going to leave this world empty handed. Why is it, friends, that when a man, when he has accumulated money in his lifetime, he has accumulated a lot of property, when he dies, God does not allow him to take with him even a shilling or anything that they have earned out of this world. I believe that what God tells a man who is dying and is being led to the grave is that, listen, when you came into this earth, you came naked. You didn't even have a shirt on you. You didn't hold anything even when you lived on earth. And therefore, my friend, when you live in this earth, you have got to go exactly the same way. And we waste money on things that don't matter. We actually waste money on things that destroy us. God is calling us to be people of integrity when it comes to handling money matters. Allow me to give you one more example around money matters. And we go all the way to 2 Kings chapter 5. And you know who we are going to read about? Elisha. Nema. This is what it says. And let us journey together. Now Naaman the commander of the army of the king of Syria was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor but was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and brought back captive a young girl from the land of Israel. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, if only my master were with the prophet who is in Samaria, for he would heal him out of his, he would heal him of his leprosy. And Naaman went and told his master, saying, thus and thus said the girl who is from the land of Israel. Then the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he departed, took with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, ten changes of clothing. Then he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which said, Now be advised when this letter comes to you, that I have sent Naaman my servant to you, that you may heal him of leprosy. Of course, the man was so angry. The king was so angry and was wondering, oh, My God! Verse 7, am I God, and am I God to kill and make a life that this man sends a man to heal him of his leprosy? Therefore, please consider and see how he seeks quarrel with me. So it was when Elisha, the man of God, had the king of Israel, had torn his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Well, you told your clothes, please let him come to me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. And then Naaman went 
with his chariots and the chariots and went with his horses and chariots and he stood at the door of Elisha's house and Elisha sent a messenger to him saying go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh will be restored to you. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, Now, some of these Old Testament prophets are heroes of mine. Can you imagine that Naaman, with his position in the society, went to Elisha's heart? And Elisha never got out of his heart. He actually just sent a word to go and tell him. I mean, when the president comes, we won't go out and meet him when he wants to see us. But Elisha didn't. He just sent a word and said, by the way, just go and watch seven times and you'll be whole. And this guy became so furious. He never had the God for man. He lived in the presence of God. And this guy became furious and went away and said, I thought this guy would just come out and cast leprosy out of me in the name of the Lord. And I would be healed. And anyway, are there not other better rivers and waters in Israel that I could wash in them and become so clean? And the servants came and they told him, wait, just do what the prophet has told you to do. So he went down, verse 14, dipped several times in the Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God, and his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child. And he returned to the man of God. He and all his aides came and stood before him and said that I have known there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Now therefore take a gift from me. But he said as the Lord lives whom I stand, I will receive nothing. And he asked him to take it, but he refused. <laughs> See how this man did not love money? I mean, what Naaman had brought to Elisha would have taken care of Elisha for so many years. It was a lot, a lot of wealth. But he said, I will not take anything. Do you know why? Naaman was a heathen. And even towards the end of this text, you see how he's pleading with Elisha that I'm an idol worshiper. I only hope that your God can forgive me. You have no business giving God money when you are a heathen. And that's why some people think that you can go and do prostitution out there and bring that money to God. He doesn't want it. And he is someone who really, you know, loved God more than money. And he knew how money could corrupt him. He went to even now, now, now man urged him. You know the way they just say, just take a little, eh? There's none of God. Just take a little. And he said they don't want it. And so Naaman decided to go. And when he was on his way, he has he verse 20, the servant of Elisha, the man of God, was wondering, I mean Elisha, you are a fool. <laughs> How do you spare this man by not receiving from his hands? As the Lord lives, even uses the name of the Lord, as the Lord lives. Eh? I will run after him and take something from him. And he pursued Neman. And when he, Neman saw him running after him, he got down to meet him. And he lied. He has lied. And said that some children, some sons of the prophets have come. And uh, Elijah has sent me that you give me some money so that we can help those people. And again, Naaman said, take two talents. And he urged him again. So just take two and say, no, 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 no. Just take, just take. And he said, fine, just give me, I will take. Do you find yourself in that position? Huh? Where somebody is saying, let us eat. You say, no, no, I don't want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, just, just a little, just fight a little. Yeah. Then you say, I'll just fight a little. Then you end up finishing a whole mountain of God. <laughs> that was the answer. <laughs> and he was given all that wealth. And when he came to Citadel, he told those fellas, you have helped me to carry, please go. Just go along here with carry this. He didn't want Elisha to save him. 
And when he stood before Elisha, Elisha asked him, Where did you go, Gehazi? And he said, I didn't go anywhere. <laughs> you know what he said? Did not my heart go out with you? In verse 26, when the man turned back from his chariot to meet you, is it a time to receive money or and to receive clothing, only groves, vineyard, sheep, oats, and melon, female servants? Therefore, you will not only have the money, but you will have the leprosy of Lemon, not only to you, but even to your descendants. Once covetousness, covetousness takes, I mean, takes grip of you, you begin to tell lies so easily. No wonder when you're given money of the Christian Union, you know, you don't even want to, you know, to you, you actually overestimate your budget because you want to be left with something. Have you ever been placed in charge of finances and you realize that we have good people? who we know very well from here to down is 64. Eh? And someone is writing 200 more. And they want that money from the Christian Union. And perhaps you serve in a committee. Please don't be like the Hazi. <coughs> Even in the student union leadership, if you're here and you're in those offices, we know how those guys embezzle funds. And you know what happens when you give money is that you carry the curse that comes with that money. And that is what exactly happened to Gehazi. Faithfulness when dealing with money is what we are talking about. And you can imagine even the number of times you have lied even to your parents. Because you have not been faithful with the little that they have given you. How do you tell your parents that you need to buy a small cow for operation in school? <laughs> and they're sending you that money in your hand because they just don't know. You're doing agriculture by or something and you're saying that you're supposed to carry out a live operation on an animal and everyone is supposed to have their own cow. <laughs> with us that if there's any if there's any area that you need to work around in your life is this of financial integrity please be very faithful in the way you handle other people's money because God will call you to account the second thing is what we call social integrity and social integrity is the way we relate with other people. But some of us, we just lack integrity in the way we relate with people. And this is where our values are challenged. Can you imagine that we have got so many bad social behaviors around us? A good example is that people are fond of lying. Imagine you're telling people you'll meet them at 4.30 and you're not able to be there and you can't even apologize that you are actually late. How do we use the facilities that are around us that other people are also using? You go to the school toilet facilities and when you get into one, you're wondering, is it a man who was here or is it an animal? <laughs> because those facilities are ours, but the way we are using them, it is as if the next person is not going to use them. How do you treat 
your fellow brethren. Paul is calling us to treat younger women as our sisters and younger men as our brothers. But we have got brothers who are troublesome even to our sisters in the way that they relate with them. I even heard of a case of where there is a brother who is fond of visiting sisters and not leaving their room until 10 p.m., 11 p.m. And the sister is wondering, why are you not going? <laughs> <laughs> the way you relate with people, is that something that God would be happy about it? And I will deal with more around social integrity when I'll, I'll be talking about technological integrity. But one of the things you need to understand is that the friends, the family, and people that God has placed around you, they're supposed to see you as a man who honors your word, as a lady who honors your word, true in what you are saying. How come sometimes we even lie when no one will punish us? And therefore, friends, in the way that we relate with people, in the way that we walk with them, we are supposed to do that with a lot of integrity. Why would you ask me for 500 and you say you will return tomorrow? And that begins to, that starts to be a, a, a moment of cat and mouse cheese game. You can't return my money. And you know that you are here, you borrowed people money, and you can't return. You're always telling them, oh, you know, help me, can you pay me people's debts? <laughs> <laughs> Someone comes to me and tells me, if I don't have me need of my 300 book and I'm broke, the first thing is that I'm helping you as a brother in Christ. I know that I'm even sacrificing something to give you that money. And then you don't return. Really? It should not be that way. And we have, some of us, we even go to those loan apps. Yeah? We get there, we borrow money, and we know very well that we are borrowing and we will not pay. Crazy integrity. <laughs> Eventually, what happens? It tells you that there is a cost for you living your life carelessly. You're borrowing all monies from all sorts of apps, then you realize that you're blacklisted. You get out there, you're looking for a job, and they're saying if you're in the CRT, we will not employ you. How do we deal with one another? If, for instance, I have done something that you're not happy about, the question is, have you, why don't you come and just tell me that even though you did this and I'm not happy? That is the spirit, because we are believers that are not supposed to go and backbite you and gossip about you, about the bad things that you have done to me. Would you tell a sister that you love them and you know that you don't love them? <laughs> Why? Even if you just wanted to satisfy your flesh, does that give you moral authority to go and violate someone's daughter? Would you want someone to do that to your sister? I mean, sisters, you, you know that you have a boyfriend. Why are you accepting me? Eh? When will you know that you have got someone in your life? And then you line me up. Eh? You line me up knowing that maybe this one will be providing some credit. And we know these things happen in our midst. No really. They do. Where you're saying, oh, as you go on abandoned, no go on like two, no go on like two. 
Spiritual integrity. John fourteen twenty one. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And when we are talking about spiritual integrity, we are talking about your walk with the Lord. But are you faithful in the way you live your Christian life? Do you really mean it or are you a hypocrite? Jesus tells us that you can say so many things about loving him. But if you don't keep his commandments, then you don't love him. And he who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. How comes we have people who are saying that they are born again, but their character is not inconsistent with what they are professing? How comes you're saying that you are a believer and that you love God and you don't even pray, you don't even read your Bible? You are living a lie. You're living a lie. And the ground on which you're standing is, is actually sand. And not so long from then, it's going to collapse right under you then you will realize that truly you have neglected your walk with God. And we, and this is actually the springboard to us living a life of integrity in all the other areas of our lives. That if you are not really true to your word about your love for God, then you can never be true about any other things. By the way, you can never have financial integrity, you can never have social integrity unless there is some integrity around what you profess about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is why we cannot keep on saying that we love God, yet we are committing presumptuous sin. We cannot say that we love God, Yet we are the ones who sit in the front of the computer and watch pornography. We cannot say that we love God when we are fornicating left, right, and center. And yet we say that we love God. Interestingly, we have got even men of God. They do not have spiritual integrity. And you find yourself in their churches and your life is a mess. And they're the ones who start telling you that you know you can just sin, if that sin will not get in your in your spirit, you'll still go to heaven. How many churches out here are tolerating sin? How many? There are so many. And that is what we want. We want to be affirmed. We want to feel like it is alright, even after all, I have sinned. You know, there's a church here in Uganda. Many of you you love it. Where the leader of that church is aware of the sexual sin that is happening in his church. He knows his pastors are involved in sexual sin. Research has been done. It is true. He has been told. He's not doing anything. He's a charismatic preacher. But we are here. We want him. Where is our spiritual integrity? Where is that truthfulness? Around our walk with God, it is very easy to sing songs of praise to God like we did this morning. But we know very well that we are fooling ourselves. The words of those songs, they don't mean what we, what we, we are saying. We say that we love Jesus, but we are deceived. And you will know that you love Jesus Christ when you go out of this building. And the first thing that you do is you remember his word and you walk in the way that Jesus wants you to walk. Spiritual integrity, that is what we are lacking today. That is the challenge, that is the problem, that is what we are going through as believers today. People almost coming up with their Bibles. 
<coughs> so that it can suit their lifestyles. Then you have got to be very, very careful about the people that you listen to. Finally, technological integrity. Do you realize that you are responsible for your online behavior as much as you are responsible for your in-person behavior? <coughs> you are responsible for your online behavior as much as you're responsible for your in-person behavior. Some of us, we are here, we behave differently online. But in, in in person, we are very different people. That sometimes you can chat to a sister and they wonder, hey, is this so and so? The kind of things that you are telling people on, on a phone, they're wondering whether you can tell them in person. The avatar, eh? Call it avatar. Yeah. You can't be an avatar online and in your physical. You can't. And therefore, technology is one area where we as young people, we are supposed to be very careful because technology seems to be a source of moral authority in many people's lives. You want to live like so and so, you want to behave like diamond, and therefore you shave like diamond, you want to, you know, uh, do things the way someone else does, and you can see how technology is really shaping people's lives. And we are exposed to technology. Friends, there is a time way back when you would have to leave your house and go somewhere and expose your heart to the darker parts of the moral world. And that is not true anymore. Today, you can expose your heart to the darker parts of the moral world right in front of you, using your phone. Friends, you can view horrible things in Instagram. You can read terrible things and expose yourself to unimaginable things in Twitter, in TikTok. And if you're a person or a young man of integrity, or spending time on this social media platform is not worth it. Friends, where in social media do you go for pleasure? This tool, social media, is good. It is not bad. It was meant to benefit us. But today it's a powerful tool for sin and temptation. And we need to be honest about that. We need to be honest about that. That we have young brethren, I mean we have brethren, we have believers who have a lot of unwholesome, ungodly, unhelpful, negative, disrespectful communication when it comes to our online platforms. It is the reason you have blocked your pastors, you have blocked church guys, you have blocked this new chairman, you have blocked your parents from viewing your WhatsApp status. It is because you do not have integrity. <laughs> you do not have it. Let us just say the truth. We are talking about sexting. People are having sex on WhatsApp. People are sharing naked, naked photos on WhatsApp. Where is your funny or something? By the way, a lady, you take a photo of your body and you share it out there. Wait until the day that thing will haunt you. Wait until the day that thing is going to haunt you. I did. Why don't you wait for marriage? If someone is asking you for your photo, then that communication needs to end right there. And not just that end right there, you should never speak to that person again. Just block them. <laughs> Doing in social media, it is harming us. It is wrong. It is harming us. It is destroying us. Let us speak the truth. Why are you lowering your standards when you go online because of technology? Why? We don't talk so much about
more technology. But it is an area where we are also to have our antennas high up and remind ourselves that we also need to have some integrity there. I personally don't have TikTok, Instagram, on my phone. Yet it is my choice. If I ever view any TikTok thing, it's because I've seen it in your status or I've seen it maybe in Facebook. It's because I'm wondering, what is it that I need there? I almost thought that Facebook is just okay for me. And probably Twitter. I want to finish, and probably Jeff Tory will be coming. Um, I want to finish by quoting um, First Timothy 316, the New Living Translation. <coughs> Do you have the NLT? New Living Translation, if any? Or the Living Bible? This is what it says. Beyond all question, the mystery from which true godliness springs is that he appeared in the flesh, was vindicated by the Spirit, was seen by the angels, was preached among nations, was believed on in the world, and was taken up in glory. The New Living Translation says this. <clears throat> and allow me to just get it right here. Says. It is quite true that the way to live a godly life is not an easy matter. It is quite true that the way to live a life of integrity is not an easy matter. As your preacher, I'm also striving to always daily live my life with a lot of integrity. And no doubt everyone knows that it is not an easy matter. You know what it says? But the answer lies in Christ. Don't you love that? It is quite true that the way to live a godly life is not an easy matter. But the answer lies in Christ who came to earth as a man, was proved spotless and pure in his spirit, was served by angels, was preached among the nations, was accepted by men everywhere, and was received up again to his glory. You can only live a life of integrity in Christ. It is only in Christ that we can stay within our Christian values because that boundary is enough for us. Be contented with what God has given you now. Each and every day, God is going to expand that circle of your finances, the circle of your social friends. God is going to prosper you spiritually if you learn to live your life in Christ. What has to bow down our heads? You know the areas in your life that you have lived without integrity. You know what is it that has troubled you. You know your battles. I want you to just go before the Lord and say, Lord, 
<coughs> help me to be a person of integrity. Help me find myself in you. As your word says that the true secret of living a godly life is in you. I want not to live for you. And so just raise your voice and and then make that prayer to God.
but you have got to be it. And that's why those people are standing next to you. One more call, anyone who is giving, who wants to give their life to Christ? Just put your hands on the shoulders of that person, if you can. And I want you to say this prayer, Lord, I'm here before you. I confess my sins. I acknowledge that, Lord Jesus, you gave your life as a ransom for me. I acknowledge that you died on the cross because of my sins. That I may be alive in you. And this morning I repent. I repent of all my sins. I choose to live for you today. <clears throat> oh God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Awaken my conscience. Let me be alive to the leading of your Holy Spirit. Take away every guilt of everything that I have ever done. <clears throat> And give me your peace. Give me your peace, O oh Lord. Because that is what I long for. And let me live your life, my life in your presence. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for the gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for our first brethren, the grateful Father, for those who have given their lives to you. We ask that, Lord, may you be with them, chat with them, strengthen them, their faith, O oh God. That as a young sick thing that's putting out of the ground, it's my prayer that, Lord, you will keep them protected in their walk. Let them experience your peace, O oh God. But not take them on a guilt trip in any way. Let them experience the new life of joy and abundance in you. And we thank you for that. We rejoice with them that they have chosen to know you. Lord, I want to pray for the rest of us, Lord. As we enter the cards and the exams, we pray that, Lord, you give us a fruitful time. Give us good health. Provide the fee, O oh God, that we need. Provide those finances in the name of Jesus. We pray for our parents, O oh God. Some of them could be sick. We pray for our siblings who are trusting you for so many things. Lord, we present them before you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the honor. You are an amazing God. You are our Father. And indeed in you, Lord, all our needs are met. In you, O God, according to riches and glory in Christ Jesus, you're able to meet our needs, O God. Give us the patience. Give us, O God, that heart of resilience. And so we bless this week. Be with us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Allow me to just come to talk to you. I like something about Ezra. Yeah, I thought sometimes it's hard for me to speak about two things at the same time. Yeah, so Karibu and Chepto. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Church. How are we? Yes, my name is Faith Chepto, and I am a fourth year. A Vera Cup. Yes, and I am a member. So, um, actually I'm just here to just do something simple here and it's noble. I don't know, ask your neighbor first if they've heard of Ezra 2023. Nakama here, we can ask them, yeah, you are Praise the Lord. Because we've been singing the song. Yes, we've been singing the song of Ezra 2023. And when you talk of Ezra 2023, perhaps you're a first year, you're a second year, a third year, or a fourth year, 
who is uh, asking herself or himself that what is Ezra? Ezra 2023 is actually a conference that only happens after every three years. After three years, praise the Lord. Yes, and it is a triennial discipleship and scripture engagement conference. And this year, it's a privilege that you'll be having Ezra 2023 in Kabarak University. It's an opportunity to also go to Kabarak University and also be shaped by script, scriptures. And the dates are, we have Ezra 2023 will be happening as from 28th of December to 1st of January 2024. It will be a very good opportunity for you, Uruke Mwakawapi, Ezra. Yes, I know there is that kabuzi you want to change it at home, but I want you to come to Ezra, to Ruke Mwaka, Ezra. The fee payment is only 3,950 shillings for students. And that is subsidized for us because associates are paying 7,000. It's a very good opportunity for us students because we are only paying 3,950. And the registration fee is a thousand. So perhaps you're asking yourself, how do you raise these funds? You can register for Ezra and you can download a photo calling out 30 friends who support you to raise a hundred shillings. Imagine for 30 a hundred. How much will you be able to raise? 30. Calculate that very fast. 3,000. And you'll be able to raise this pro forma for the same. And I encourage us to participate and join Ezra 2023. You are a fourth year. The next time Ezra will be happening, you will be an associate. And you will be paying 7,000. And I don't know whether you will be able to, to come. So I encourage you to join now. For, a, for As a first year, this is the best opportunity to, to join and go for Ezra conference. So... There will be so many things happening in Ezra. We'll be having plenary sessions. We'll be having Bible studies and many, many more. So I want us to say our slogan. It's Ezra 2023. Back to basics. Back to basics. Ezra 2023. Now we do it with UMF as UOECU. It's Ezra 2023. Back to basics. Back to the basics. Ezra 2023. Yes, to Patane Ezra. And let's register, we can reach out to the Ezra Mobilizing Committee and even the exec, they will help you to register and even be able to know the way forward. Sawa sawa. Karibuni and Tupatane Ezra. Aside from Tupatana within Tupatana Wapi, Ezra. Thank you so much. Now, Ezra is your conference. And we are saying that we have a very a pro forma for you to raise that money. It is not hard. Some of you, you have got a thousand people in your phone book. And we are saying, just look for those 30 who are close to you. Or even a hundred who are close to you. And ask them to give you that a hundred. With that pro forma, we allow you to raise even your fare. Okay, so you don't only need to raise 3,950, but now, if you raise beyond your fare, the, you might not need pocket money, support someone else, okay? Yeah, so our prayer is that we need to see you in Ezra. Now, on a very serious note, I am your CMF. My title is Imaton Kataka CMF UOE. Now, can you imagine when other CMFs are receiving their students? And then me, your CMF, I am there, I'm waiting, I see Lobo. I wish again, you know, I see Phil. It is not nice. So, what you are saying is that even if you are still wondering what this Ezra is, just say it now. Because of Everton Kataka, let me attend Ezra. I would be very happy. <laughs> and, and I'm supposed to take around 400 from this Christian Union. Now, I have about 200 who have registered. And I'm looking for 200 more. Now, after attending Ezra and you feel it is a waste of time, just come to me and say, Ibaton, after attending Ezra and you notice I waste your time, I will commit to refund your money because... <laughs> Want to miss. Can you imagine 4,000 students crossing 
the year together. That is an amazing conference that you don't want to miss. And we are saying that it is ours. It is not any other person's conference. And that's why we want to see as many of you registering for that conference. He prays that the Lord will pray. And so if you see your stemma really asking you to register, please register. I'm also here to just make that passionate plea, that passionate plea that this conference is yours. And I would be so happy to see you people in robes uh, attending Ezra conference. You will come. Amen. When I see you, I hope you are so much blessed so that you are on peace so that you can continue our service. It was announced on Friday will be with our evaluation, just come with a bio and uh, come and give your feelings towards our you. Amen. Now we can share what you say. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of all the spirits be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Yeah, make sure you greet somebody and you know it's our name.